On August 28, 2016, a freak of nature storm surge hit Cincinnati that caused unprecedented flooding like never before seen in many areas around the city. While the storm did not cause heavy storm and lightning damage, the amount of rain that fell as quickly as it did caused widespread flooding all over the city. The neighborhoods of Norwood, St. Bernard, Oakley, and Hyde Park, to name a few, they saw the worst of it. In Oakley on Madison Road, there's a floodgate wall that was built to protect the properties on the west side of Duck Creek. In this video, I'm not only going to show you that the wall did indeed malfunction and fail, but I will also show you why it will never ever work correctly in an emergency situation because of the major design flaws with the system and its design. And this Google map imagery from 2007, you can see what Duck Creek and Madison looked like prior to the building of the floodgate wall. We can see in videos from the torrential downpour on August 28th that the flood wall did indeed fail to do its job. One of the city engineers appeared on Cincinnati Channel 9 News and stated that the floodgate worked as it was intended to. He stated that the sensor is supposed to activate when the water level gets to a certain height. You can see the flood wall sensor here in this close-up. Let me show you how this floodgate system works. This sensor over Duck Creek, it tracks the water level, and at a certain point, it's supposed to trigger this blockade to move right over the road. The entire time, the floodgate where this happened never budged. So none on your side asked city engineers why. There's nothing for us to, that indicates to us that the creek came up and flooded the street. These photos show the danger. Darren Bowman says this white sedan was among four cars stranded, and Duck Creek, he says, was rushing right over the road. In this video clip that I filmed, you could clearly see that the water was up to the bottom of the bridge. I contacted that engineer after the interview, and I spoke with him on the phone. I asked him how high the water level had to be in order for it to activate the sensor. His reply was that he didn't know. He said he had to check data sheets, which is interesting because in the interview that you just saw, he said that it worked perfectly. How does he know that it worked perfectly if he doesn't even know how high the water level has to be? Notice the two-tier wall system that you can see here. One is the inner part of the creek and one is the outer part of the flood wall. The flood walls appear on the west and the east side of Duck Creek. Here you can see one of the flood walls on the east side of Duck Creek that was erected to protect the businesses that were once here. Okay, let's just humor the engineer for a second. and Let's say that the water level was still not high enough to trigger the sensor. The problem then becomes the fact that the cemented creek that goes under the sensor was at its maximum capacity. I'll explain that in a second. If the floodgate wall did not malfunction, then we have a major problem here. Being that the water level was at its maximum capacity under the sensor, that means that that flood wall gate will never ever close in an emergency situation. If you're still skeptical about what I'm saying, you're about to see right here exactly what I'm talking about. It's all going to come together here for you in a second. And this clip that you're seeing here that I shot today, several days after the flood, we're walking along the flood wall on the east side of Duck Creek, the side closest to Madison Bowl. We're walking in the area that you can see on the Google map that runs parallel to the railroad tracks. The railroad tracks go over Madison Road and they also go over Duck Creek. There's a tunnel where the creek runs under the railroad tracks, as you will see here. Now this is where things start to get really interesting. Look at this. It's like a ramp. It's like a water ramp. No doubt in my mind. That water, that water could not take this turn. 
it was rushing through here and it came up over this wall right here and all the way down and flooded out. That water is going to get to about this high. So where that uh, graffiti is right there, about less than halfway up is about high, how high this right here is. And it also looks like it was acting as a ramp for the water. The water came right up around the bridge. Half of the water that came down the creek never had a chance to make it underneath the sensor. The water was never able to make this turn. It came right up over this wall. Look how small this area, this area is. So if it was all the way to the top of that wall and that wide of an area, this little tiny bit of an area was definitely Totally over flooded. And then it came right up this wall. Which is not very high at all. So in order for that floodgate to effectively work, This wall needs to be connected to that wall, and it needs to be very high. There's a reason this wall here is this high. Instead of going down this way, this wall needs to go across to the bridge. That gate will never close because of the water gets to be a certain point where it's over capacity it will overflow here and flow down here and do the exact same thing that it did every single time all of a sudden a wall of water like a wave at the ocean just comes right at me so the engineer in his interview said that the water never flowed onto Madison Road well it depends on what perspective you're taking did the water flow onto Madison Road from underneath the Duck Creek Bridge? It sure looked like it, but it's possible that it didn't. Was the floodgate not closed because the water level didn't get high enough under the sensor? How high does that water have to get for one? If you look at it in another perspective, he was wrong because water did flood onto Madison Road, but it did it from here, not from the bridge that goes across Duck Creek. Another 10 or 15 minutes of the torrential downpour that we were receiving, the houses and businesses that are all up here on Madison Road would have been totally flooded. It was about five minutes away, if that, from reaching our doorsteps. We were watching it come up the road, and there was nothing that we could do about it. A lot of us had water in our basement, but it was not from that. If the water would have kept rising from this area right here, it would have surely flooded our entire houses, no doubt in my mind. This is what happened. 
Oh no. On Madison Road near Kennedy. All of a sudden, a wall of water, like a wave at the ocean, just comes right at me. There's nothing for us to, that indicates to us that the creek came up and flooded the street. You can clearly see in this video water pouring onto Madison Road and it's coming from Duck Creek. The engineers know this design flaw and they're trying to keep it quiet.